In this video, we will learn about linear equations in two variables. If you recall from your previous classes, you have already studied linear equations in one variable, and these are some of the examples of linear equations in one variable. Uh, what do we mean by a variable? A variable is anything that can change, that can take on different values. And we represent the variables using certain letters. For example, in this equation, the variable is represented by the letter x. Again, here in this uh, linear equation, the variable is represented by the letter x. In this particular example here, the variable is represented by the letter y. In this case, it is, it is represented by the letter z. And here also, again, it is x. So generally, the convention to represent a variable is to use the letters x, y, z, but it is perfectly fine to use any other letters to represent variables. For example, we could have a variable represented by the letter a or b, or even for that matter, s or t. So uh, we can use any letter to represent a variable. But uh, in general, the norm is to use the letters x, y, z uh, to represent the variables. That's the first bit of information. The second uh, important piece of information is that uh, this, these are linear equations in one variable. So if you notice all these equations, these have a single variable that is represented by a single letter. So this particular equation here is having only one variable, which is the variable x. This again is, a, is an equation with a single variable, which is represented by the letter x. Uh, this is an equation also with a single variable represented by the letter y. And in this case, it is, a, uh, it is an equation with a single variable. Uh, which ha which is represented by the letter z. So when we say linear equations in one variable, it means that the equation has only one letter or one variable in it. And uh, from these equations, we can get their solutions. The solution is basically, what is the value of the variable if we substitute in place of that variable that will, that will uh, uh, equate that equation okay that will so that will agree with that equation so what value of x if you put in here will this equation be satisfied uh, in this case what is the value of x that will satisfy this equation again this is actually a solution x equal to zero so uh, we can write this as uh, the solution x the value of x is it's e equal to zero itself in this case we can find what is the solution for this equation that means what value of y will satisfy this equation so that means what should we put in place of y that when we solve this expression it should give us zero okay that will be the solution for this equation that's the first bit of uh, thing that we need to figure out and then what you will also see is uh, the second part of the question is uh, that we will uh, see is that for linear equations in one variable how many solutions are there? Does it have only one unique solution or can it have multiple solutions? Let's try to figure out from these examples. Now, what is the value of x that will satisfy this equation? Uh, clearly, if we put x equal to minus 1 and uh, x equal to plus 1 in this uh, equation, so if we substitute in place of x the value 1, 1 minus 1 will be 0. And that is the value that will satisfy this equation. So let's write it down. Uh, x minus 1 equals 0. So if we put x equal to 1, so how can we get this? How can we solve this equation? All we have to do is from the equation, we will keep the uh, the variable on one side of this equation and move all the numbers to the other side. And then we will solve for the variable. So uh, we will keep x on the left hand side and move the minus 1 to the other side. So when we move the minus 1 to the other side of the equal sign, uh, it will become plus 1. So we will have x equal to the minus 1 when, go, when, go, when it goes to the other side, it will become 0 plus 1. All right? 0 is already there. The minus 1 goes to the other side. So it becomes 0 plus 1. So that means x equal to 1 is the solution for this particular 
equation. Now, is there any other solution for this equation? Is there any other number which if we substitute in this equation, this equation will be satisfied? Clearly, 1 is a solution. If we substitute in place of x, the number 1. So, uh, in place of x, we substitute 1. And then we have minus 1 equals 0. And this equation is satisfied. 1 minus 1 is 0. So, on the left-hand side, it's 1 minus 1, which is... Uh, 0 so 0 equals 0 and that is true that statement is true so this is a solution for this equation x equal to 1 is a solution for this particular equation now is there any other solution for this that means is there any other value of x which if we substitute in this equation this equality will hold Clearly, there is no other value of x that will satisfy this equation. So that means linear equations in one variable have only one solution and that solution is a unique solution. There is no other solution. So again, let's take the other example 2y plus 5 equal to 0. So let's take this equation and try to find its solution. I'll just partition the page here. So we have... Uh, let me use blueing for the question 2y plus 5 equals 0. So how do we solve this? The first thing is we will keep the 2y on the left hand side and move the plus 5 to the other side. So the plus 5 when it goes to the other side of the equation, it will become 0 minus 5. The plus 5 on the other side is minus 5. So that means this is equal to 2y equals minus 5. Now we want to find the value of y. So what do we do? This is 2 times y, 2 into y. So we have to move the 2 to the other side. So because 2 is multiplying the y, when it goes to the other side, it will become, it, it will divide the minus 5. It will go to the denominator. So 2 into y equals minus 5. So that means when we take the 2 to the other side, it will go to the denominator. So it will become minus 5 divided by 2. So now we have the value of y equals minus 5 by 2. So let us try to substitute this in the given equation. So the equation is 2y plus 5 equals 0. So let's, in place of y, we will substitute minus 5 by 2. So 2 into minus 5 by 2 plus 5 equals 0. So let's see if this equation solves. So clearly we have... Uh, 2 in the denominator here so this 2 and this 2 will cancel out so what is left is minus 5 and uh, plus 5 so minus 5 plus 5 is nothing but 0 so on the left hand side of this equation we have 0 so that is minus 5 plus 5 is 0 and the right hand side is already 0 and the equation is satisfied so therefore y equals minus 5 by 2 is a solution for this equation so clearly what we notice is that when we have a linear equation in a single variable we can find the solution by solving for that variable and then what we also understand is that uh, linear equations in one variable will have a unique solution a single solution so uh, there is linear let me write down that statement uh, linear equations in one variable have a unique solution okay so that means there is only one single solution for linear equations in one variable okay let us now uh, look at so that's the uh, uh, examples we had here and we have seen that uh, we have written, the, written the, the, the answer for this particular question that linear equations indeed have a unique solution. So uh, for the first equation that is there, the solution is x equal to 1. Uh, the next one x equal to 0 is itself a solution. Uh, then for... Uh, 
uh, 2y plus 5 equals 0. The solution is y equals minus 5 over 2. Uh, similarly, for uh, square root of 2 times z minus square root of 5 equals 0. So the solution for this will be uh, square root of 2 times z. The minus root 5, if we take it to the other side, it will become plus root 5. So 0 plus root 5 is just root 5. And then we will have z equals root 5 divided by root 2. So that's the solution for this third particular third equation. Similarly, for uh, 3x equals minus 5. So all we have to do is to move the 3 to the other side. So since 3 is multiplying the x, when it goes to the other side, it will divide the minus 5. So it is minus 5 divided by 3. So 3 goes to the denominator. Okay. So now we can verify that when we substitute these values of the variables in the uh, equations from which we have obtained them, uh, we will see that that equation is satisfied. That means the left-hand side of the equation and the right-hand side of the equation will be the same. So linear equations in one variable have a unique solution or a, a single solution. So the answer to this question, do equations in one variable have a unique solution? The answer is uh, Y, E, S. Okay, it is yes. Okay, the linear equations in one variable have a unique solution. Okay, now we have recalled what we had studied previously in our previous class uh, regarding linear equations in one variable. And we have seen how to find the solution and also understood that linear equations in one variable have a single unique solution. Now let us move on to linear equations in two variables and have a look at some examples of linear equations in two variables. And as the name suggests, it is two variables, so there will be two letters in the equations, each letter representing one of the variables. So in this case here, we have x plus y equals 5. So x is one variable and y is the second variable. So this equation has two variables, x and y. Similarly here, 2x minus 3y equals 0. So one of the variables is x and the other variable is y. And as we said before, it is a general convention or norm to write the or to represent the variables using the letters x, y, z and so on. But of course, we can use other letters also. Like in this case here, we have used the letters s and t to represent the two variables. s is one of the variables and t is the other variable. Uh, in this uh, example here, uh, the variable is u and the second variable is v. So we have used u and v here. But generally, you will see most of the times the variables x, y, z uh, being used more frequently. The other variables will be used less frequently. So, so these are examples of two variables, uh, linear equations in two variables. And uh, clearly, uh, each of these equations is having two letters, each letter representing one of the variables. Now, what we will be doing in this particular lecture is that uh, we will only be seeing how to uh, represent all these equations in some general form. And then we will also see uh, how or what are some of the rules that we need to remember when dealing with linear equations in general and not just uh, for linear equations with two variables but in general when we are doing uh, dealing with any linear equations there are some rules that we need to remember so we will see what are those rules okay however uh, solving the linear equations in two variables we will do that in the next video okay for this video we are going to focus only on uh, two important aspects of linear equations the first is how to represent these linear equations in some general form and then we will study some of the rules that we need to remember when dealing with these linear equations okay so let us first deal with the rules of uh, uh, that we need to remember when dealing with these uh, kind of equations and the first rule states that the uh, solution of the linear equation is not affected if we add the same number or subtract the same number from 
both sides of the equation. So let us take the uh, examples of the linear equations from here. So we have the first equation x plus y equal to 5. So let's write that down here. So we have x plus y equals 5. What this first rule tells us is that if we add the same number to both sides of this equation, then the solution of this equation will not be affected. That means uh, on the left hand side, we have x plus y. Uh, let's say we add plus 6 on the left hand side and we do the same thing to the right hand side. So the or originally on the right hand side, we had 5. Now we add the 6 to the other side as well. So now we get this as x plus y plus 6 equals 5 plus 6 is 11 okay so we have added the same number to both sides of the equation and this does not affect the relationship specified or mentioned in this uh, equation okay so that means the solution of this equation is not affected if we add the same number to both sides of the equation similarly if we subtract the same number from both sides of the equation even then the solution of the linear equation will not be affected so uh, let me take the same equation x plus y equals 5 so let's say we subtract uh, 2 from both sides of the equation so x plus y and you have minus 2 so we are subtracting 2 from the left hand side and similarly we will subtract 2 from the right hand side so right hand side we had 5 we are subtracting 2 from 5 just as we are subtracted uh, 2 from x plus y so now this equation becomes x plus y minus 2 equals 5 minus 2 which is 3 so uh, what we are basically saying is that uh, this equation and this equation are the same and they will have the same solutions if we go ahead and solve these equations okay we will look at the solutions later on in the next video but for now let us just remember that uh, rule number one states that if we add the same number to both sides of the equation the two equations are the same and they will have the same solution similarly uh, if we subtract the same number from both sides of the equation then the solution of the equation will not be affected okay so we have subtracted here so what we are saying is that uh, this equation and this equation are one and the same and their solutions will be the same okay so that's the first rule it's regarding adding or subtracting some number to both sides of the equation the second rule states that uh, if we multiply or divide both sides of the equation by the same non-zero number, even then the equation is not affected and hence therefore the solution of the equation is also not affected. So let's take the same example x plus y equals 5. So the uh, equation is x plus y equals 5 that's our original equation so we're going to multiply the left hand side with some non-zero number and we'll multiply the right hand side also with the with the same non-zero number and we will uh, say that the uh, equation is not affected and hence its solution is also not affected so let's say we multiply both sides of the equation by the number 2 so 2 into x plus y okay so the left hand side is x plus y we are multiplying the left hand side the entire left hand side by the number 2 so that means we have to multiply by the same 2 to the right hand side also so when we simplify this we will get it as 2 in so we will open up the bracket so it will become 2x plus 2y equals 2 into 5 is 10 okay so this is what we mean by uh, multiplying the left hand side and right hand side that is both sides of the equation by the same non-zero number in this case the same non-zero number is the number 2. We are multiplying both sides of the equation by the number 2. Uh, so the left-hand side is multiplied by 2 and the right-hand side is also multiplied by 2. 
and it is a non-zero number it should not be zero okay the multiplying factor or the multiplying number should not be zero in that case the solution of the linear equation is not affected okay similarly if we divide both sides of the equation by the same non-zero number then that equation also uh, will not be affected in terms of its solution so let's take the same example for the purpose of illustration so we have x plus y equals 5 so if we divide both sides of the equation by the same non-zero number uh, then the equation is not affected and hence its solution is also not affected so uh, i'm going to divide both sides of the equation by the number five so uh, x plus y is the left hand side we will divide that by 5 and on the right hand side we have 5 and we are going to divide that by 5 so we have divided both sides of this equation by the number 5 and what we get is x plus y divided by 5 equals 5 by 5 which is 1 and we can write this equivalently as x by 5 plus y by 5 equals 1 and what we are basically saying is that this equation is the same as this equation and that's the same as this equation all these are representations of the same equation and uh, all of these uh, have, will have the same solution because we have simply multiplied uh, the, the the given equation uh, using the same non-zero number or we are multiplying or dividing the equation or both sides of the equation by the same non-zero number in this case that non-zero number with which we are dividing is the number five so we have divided the left hand side by the number five and we have divided the right hand side also by the number five and this does not affect the solution of this equation okay so it, it has to be the same non-zero number okay it can be a negative number as well so we can we could have multiplied this equation or uh, both sides of this equation with minus 3 or we could have divided by minus 10 on both sides in all cases the solution of the equation is not affected Okay, so now we have the two, two rules that uh, we need to remember when uh, solving linear equations. Okay, the first rule is that uh, when we add or subtract some same number to both sides of the equation, the solution of the equation is not affected. Similarly, if you multiply or divide both sides of the equation by the same number, which is non-zero number, then uh, this, again the solution of the equation is not affected. Now let us move on to see what is the general form of representing a linear equation in two variables. So uh, we have written all these equations in, as in, in some form but uh, we need to have some general form of representing the equations and the general form is that we want to keep all the uh, variables and the non-zero numbers on the left hand side of the equal to and on the right hand side of the equal sign we want to have only the number zero. So what we will do is in this first example, uh, we have the number five on the left hand side. So all we want to do is that uh, we want to move this number five to the left hand side of the equal to. And uh, so basically what we're going to do is we are going to subtract uh, the same number from both sides of the equation. So we are going to subtract five from both sides of the equation so we will get x plus y minus 5 equals 5 minus 5. So basically we have subtracted 5 from the left hand side and we, have, we are subtracting 5 from the right hand side of this equation. So now we get uh, x plus y minus 5 equals 0. Okay. So this is what is called as the general form of representing a linear equation. We want all the variables x y and the non-zero number which is there in that equation to be on the left hand side of the expression and on the right hand side we want only the number zero so we want to represent these equations and uh, in this particular form 
and this is called as the general form of the linear equation. So uh, one way of doing it is that we simply move uh, whatever terms which are on the right hand side to the left hand side and uh, make the, uh, uh, the right hand side zero. So when we move this plus phi which is on the right hand side of the equal sign to the left hand side of the equal sign the plus phi will become minus five and what is left here is zero. So now x plus y minus phi equal to zero and this is basically the same as applying rule number one where we stated that if we add or subtract the same number to both sides of the equation the solution of the equation is not affected okay so similarly here for the second example all we have to do is move this minus two to the left hand side of the equal sign so when this comes to the left hand side of the equal sign it is simply going to be uh, the minus two will become plus two so uh, this equation will become root 3 times x plus root 5 times y and the minus 2 when it comes to this side it is plus 2 equals so what is remaining on the right hand side is 0. So now this is the same as uh, root 3x plus root 5y. So I'm just writing down the steps now. Uh, we are going to add two to both sides of the equation so i'm going to make it plus two which is equal to minus two plus two so on the left hand side we have added two and on the right hand side of this equation we have added two so adding the same number to both sides of the equation does not affect the equation so now we uh, when we solve this the right hand side becomes minus two plus two which is zero and we have plus two here so we have now got this equation in the general form where we have uh, all the uh, variables and the non-zero number on the left hand side and what we have on the right hand side is simply the number zero similarly here uh, we can move the 10 to the left hand side or in other words we can subtract 10 from both sides of the equation so we will have 3s plus 2t minus 10 equals 10 minus 10 so we will have uh, 3s plus 2t minus 10 equals 0 so we now have all these expressions represented in what we call as the general form now once we have it in the general form uh, we will attach some uh, uh, some some other letters to each of the numbers that are uh, multiplying the variables for example uh, in this case uh, the number that is attached with the letter x or the variable x is the number one this is one x this is one y and this is minus five okay so uh, the general form is given by this expression it is a x plus b y plus c equals zero okay. so we want to represent each of the uh, equations or in general the linear equation in two variables in this general form as ax plus by plus c where the uh, parameter a is called as the coefficient of x the parameter b is called as the coefficient of y and the parameter c is called as the constant term uh, which is in this case minus 5 so the coefficient of x is whatever number is multiplying x so in this particular example it is 1 times x it is x similarly it is 1 times y so it is b equals 1 uh, minus 5 so that means c equals minus 5 so if you look at this expression here the coefficient of x in place so this is like ax plus by plus c equals 0 so the value of a is root 3 the value of b is root 5 and the value of c is 2 so if you look at this expression here it is like as plus bt plus c equals 0 so uh, the variable is s and the coefficient of s is 3 so a corresponds to 3 uh, and the letter and the parameter b is going to be 2 and the parameter c is going to be minus 10. So we want to have the representation of the linear equation in the general form. And then we want to find these coefficients a, b and c. Okay. So uh, once we have it in the general form, it will be straightforward to find these coefficients a, b and c.
So let us do some examples of representing linear equations in the general form. So we have uh, these equations here and we want to represent them in the general form. So for the first example here, all we have to do is we have to move this 4.37 to the left hand side of the equal. So uh, we will have it as 2x plus 3y. So, and the 4.37 is on the right hand side, it is plus 4.37. So when it moves to the left hand side, it will become minus 4.37 equals 0 okay so that's the uh, first uh, the general the general form of the first equation and now from this representation of, of this equation in the general form we will find out what is the value of a b and c so what is the value of a in this case it is a x so a in this case is this number two oh so the number 2 here is our a, the 3 here is our b, and the minus 4 that we have here, the remaining part, that's our c, the minus 4.37, okay? Uh, let me write that. So it's this, the number, the constant term that we call it as c. So uh, a equals 2, b equals 3, and c equals uh, minus 4.37 okay so we have written down the linear equation in this general form and obtained the values of the parameters a b and c which are called as the coefficients in that equation so a is the coefficient of x b is the coefficient of y and c is the constant coefficient okay so similarly, we will do it for the next example. Uh, so we have x minus 4 equals root 3 times y. So we want to keep ev everything on the left hand side and leave only 0 on the right hand side. So on the right hand side now we have root 3 times y which we want to bring it to the left hand side. So we will have it as x the root 3 y we will bring it to the left hand side so the plus root 3 y will become minus root 3 times y and we have the minus 4 equals 0 so once we have moved the root 3 y to the left hand side what is remaining on the right hand side is only 0 and generally we want to represent the equation the general form is we will have the first variable then the second variable and then the constant term okay so in this case, what is the coefficient of x? Uh, if there is nothing in front of x, it means uh, the coefficient of x is 1. That is when x is standing alone, the coefficient of x is 1. So you will write a equals 1. What is the coefficient of y? Uh, we denote that by the letter b and that is equal to minus root 3. Okay, again, bear in mind, you have to take the sign into consideration okay when you take these parameters a b and c you should not forget the sign that is present there okay so the coefficient of y is minus root 3 so b is minus root 3 and the constant coefficient c in this case is minus 4 okay so we have to take it with the sign okay now let's look at the third example so we want to move everything to the uh, left hand side and keep only zero on the right hand side so on the left hand side we have 5x and minus 3y so when 5x comes to the left hand side it will become minus 5x and the minus 3y when it is shifted to the left hand side it will become plus 3y so we can write this as minus 5x plus 3y plus 4 equals 0 so we have moved the plus 5x to the left hand side so it becomes minus 5x and the minus 3y when it is moved to the other side of the equals it becomes plus 3y and then we have the plus 4 okay the 4 stands alone so it's with a positive sign so it's plus 4 and now <clears throat> we can find the values of a b and c so a in this case is minus 5 uh, b is 3 and c is 4 okay so uh, that's the representation of this equation in the general form 
and correspondingly the coefficients a b and c now there is another way of representing this equation so rather than moving the x and y to the left hand side we could have just moved the 4 to the right hand side uh, so if we do that uh, I'll write it as another method another uh, way so uh, 4 equals 5x minus 3y so if we subtract 4 on both sides of the equation the left hand side will become 4 minus 4 is 0 and on the right hand side we'll get 5x minus 3y minus 4 so this is the same thing as 5x minus 3y minus 4 equals 0 so we can say 0 equals 5x minus 3y minus 4 or we can uh, write the same thing as 5x minus 3y minus 4 equals 0 in this case uh, the parameter a is 5 because ax the, the number multiplying the variable x is called a so that's a equals 5 and then we have uh, b equals minus 3 and c equals minus 4 so if you compare these two things okay rather than moving x and y uh, to the left hand side if you move the 4 to the other side uh, these are both uh, equivalent answers they are both correct and what you need to notice is that all the signs of the parameters have uh, have been changed okay here a is minus 5 here we have a equals plus 5 here b is plus 3 here it becomes minus 3 and here c is plus 4 in this case it is minus 4 okay both these answers are correct and you can uh, uh, generally we will keep all the uh, uh, variables and the constant number on the left hand side and keep zero on the right hand side but uh, sometimes like in this case uh, there are more terms on the right hand side so it's easier to move only the less number of terms from the left hand side to the right hand side okay and in, in, either way the solution is correct okay so or, or the only thing that you will notice is that the signs of these coefficients have become have, have uh, simply become opposite to each other okay so what is what is positive here becomes negative here and what is negative here becomes positive here Okay, let us move on to one more example here. So we have 2x equals y. So we can write this as 2x minus y. So we are moving the y to the left hand side equals 0. Now uh, we have, uh, this is like ax plus by plus c equal to 0. So in this case, we don't see a c. We have uh, an x term, a y term, but there is no constant number term. So we can write this as 2x minus y plus 0 equals 0. So in this case, this is like ax plus by plus c equals 0. Okay. So adding 0 does not affect the result. So in this case, uh, a equals 2, b equals it is minus y that means it is minus 1y okay when there is nothing in front of the variable it means there is a, a number 1 and because there is a minus here it is minus 1y so it is uh, the coefficient b is therefore uh, minus 1 and the coefficient c in this case is 0 okay so now we have seen how we can represent the linear equation in two variables in the general form and find the values of the coefficients of the variables okay uh, now the other thing that we notice is that uh, even when you have uh, equations which look like as if they are uh, equations in one variable we can still represent them as equations in two variables like in these examples here so if you look at x equal to minus 5 this appears like this is an equation in a single variable which is x so we can write this as x we shift the minus 5 to the left hand side so it becomes plus 5 equals 0 there is no y here but we want to represent them as uh, 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 as an equation in two variables in the general form so when the second variable is not available in the equation it means the coefficient of that variable is zero so you can write that as x plus zero times y plus five 
equals zero. And in this case, the parameters a, b, and c, we can write as a equals, it is one x, so a equals one, b equals zero times y, so b is zero, and c equals five, okay? Similarly here, y equals two, we can write this as y minus two equals zero. So we have just moved the two to the left-hand side. So the plus two becomes minus two equals once uh, when there's nothing on the right-hand side, it means it is zero. So now uh, there is no x term. So we can write that as zero x plus y minus two equals zero. So a equals zero, b equals one. So it's one y and c equals minus 2. So the multiplying factor for the variable x is 0. That's why there is no x. It is 0x. So it is like saying, I bought 0 chocolates. That means you did not buy any chocolates, right? So 0x plus 1y minus 2 equals 0. So a equals 0, b equals 1, and c equals minus 2. Similarly here, uh, 2x equals 3 can be written as I'm just going to uh, go a bit faster here. So 2x, there is no y, so it is plus 0y. And the 3, we move to the left-hand side, so it becomes minus 3 equals 0. And now the coefficient a is equal to 2. The coefficient b is 0. And the coefficient c is minus 3. Similarly here, we can write it as 0x plus 5y minus 2 equals 0. So there is no x here. So we say 0x. The 5y is with a positive sign in front. When there is no sign, it, in, it indicates it's positive. So it's plus 5y. The 2 on the right-hand side, when we bring it to the left-hand side, it becomes minus 2. And now we have the coefficients. a equals 0, b equals 5, and c equals minus 2. So we have these... Uh, uh, equations which appear to be as linear equations in one variable but we have represented them as uh, linear equations in two variables so when there is only one variable it means that the other variable has a coefficient of zero it is multiplied with a zero coefficient so that is why that variable is not there okay so just for illustration purposes we we have shown this here uh, but basically it means that uh, that uh, particular variable is not present in the equation or in other words the coefficient of that variable is zero okay let us now uh, do exercise 4.1 from the textbook it is a very simple and straightforward exercise and we are given a statement and we are asked to uh, represent that statement in the form of a linear equation so the statement says that the cost of a notebook is twice the cost of a pen okay so let us first say uh, denote the cost of a notebook by some variable. So let's say uh, let cost of notebook equals x and uh, cost of pen equals y. So what does the statement tell us? It says that the cost of the notebook is twice two times the cost of a pen. So that means the cost of the notebook, which is x, is two times the cost of pen, that is two times y. So, and that means the cost of a notebook x is equal to two times the cost of a pen. So the cost of a pen is y, two times y is the cost of two pens basically, and that is the same as the cost of one notebook. It, in other words, it means that one notebook costs the same as two pens. So we can say that, uh, for example, if a pen costs five rupees, then a notebook will cost 10 rupees. So uh, one pen is five rupees, that means two pens will be 10 rupees. And therefore, uh, the cost of a notebook is the same as the cost of two pens. So two pens cost 10 rupees and one notebook costs also 10 rupees. So x equal to 2y is the representation of the statement in the form of a linear equation. So the cost of a notebook, which is x, is equal to the cost of two pens or twice the cost of one pen. Okay, so two times y. So we have denoted the cost of a notebook as x and the cost of a pen as y. So cost of one notebook is 
twice the cost of a pet x equals to y okay so we should be able to translate english sentences into mathematical representations and then we can apply the rules of mathematics to solve those equations or represent mathematical representations of those statements okay so uh, it is an important aspect in mathematics to be able to represent statements in the form of mathematical expressions okay now let us uh, do the second exercise where second question of this exercise where we have to represent these equations in the general form and find the coefficients uh, a b and c so the for the first uh, equation so we can uh, write it as 2x plus 3y and we have 9.35 with the dash on top that means it is 9.35555 that's a recurring decimal right so that's with the plus 9.35 so when we move that to the left hand side it will become minus 9.35 dash so we'll leave it as it is uh, and the right hand side once we have moved the 9.35 to the left hand side what is remaining is zero on the right hand side or in other words we are subtracting 9.35 from both sides of the equation and once we have this in this form which is our general form from this what is a a equals the coefficient of x whatever is multiplying the variable x that's the number two so a equals two uh, b equals the, the number that is multiplying the variable y so it is three times y so b equals three and c equals minus nine point three five dash okay so we have uh, represented this equation in the general form and found the values of a b and c now uh, this second equation it's already in the general form uh, and we all we have to do is find out what are the values of a b and c but to understand clearly or uh, to the, the values of a b and c we'll just rewrite this slightly differently so x as it is minus y by 5 we are going to write that as 1 by 5 times y okay so y divided by 5 is the same as uh, 1 by 5 multiplying y right and we have minus 10 equals 0 so now what are the uh, numbers that are multiplying the variables the number that is multiplying the variable x is 1 so the parameter a equals 1 what is the number multiplying the variable y it is minus 105 so the parameter b is minus 1 over 5 and the parameter c is minus 10 okay very straightforward so we have uh, representing uh, the equations in the general form and and identifying the values of the parameters a b and c okay now let's look at this last example we have 5 equals 2x so we're going to move the 2x to the left hand side so when it comes to the left hand side it will become minus 2x plus 5 equals 0 okay and what you notice is that there is no y term here so to uh, find the value of a b and c we need a y term as well if there is no term for a particular variable that means that variable is having a coefficient of zero so we'll we can rewrite this as minus 2x there is no y time is the same as plus zero y and we have the plus five equal zero so once we have written it in this form now we can write our parameters a and a is going to be minus 2 because uh, the number multiplying the variable x is minus 2 the parameter b is the number multiplying the variable y and since it is 0 there is no y in this expression so b equals 0 and c equals plus 5 so we will write it simply as c equals 5 so we have seen how to uh, represent linear equations in two variables in the general form and also identify the parameters a b and c and we've also seen two rules uh, regarding the solutions of linear equations the first rule states that if we add the same number uh, to both sides of the equation the solution of the equation is not affected if we subtract the same number from both sides of the equation again the equation is not affected similarly if we multiply or divide the equation on both sides by the same non-zero number the equation and its solution is also not affected 
and we will use these rules when we are solving linear equations in two variables okay so we have now seen uh, how to represent these linear equations in the general form and also uh, how to identify the values of the coefficients a b and c uh, in the next video we will deal with uh, how to solve these linear equations in two variables and also see uh, develop some understanding in fact of uh, uh, the number of solutions that can be possible for linear equations in two variables okay we'll discuss all of that in the next video